Lord, we just thank you that your glory is here. We thank you that you're wanting to infiltrate our lives to such a degree we can't even imagine it. You're wanting to step in and take over. Lord, it's so hard to let somebody take over at times. I pray that we would be able to let you take over our circumstances, our situation. Lord, many of us would say our way don't work. We want your way. We thank you so much, Lord, for us being able to uh, be in covenant with you like we heard earlier. We thank you for being such a great God. We invite you, invite you, invite you. We thank you in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Whoa, awesome. We want his fullness. Does that just make you go, man, do I really want that? Y'all really want that? Won't that be awesome when that happens? It hadn't happened to me yet. I don't have it all. I have him, which is all, but you know what I'm saying. I want it all. I want to get it all. I want every area of my life turned over to him. Uh, so I just, uh, I'm so grateful for such a great worship team uh, to bring in the presence of the Lord, people that are interceding for the, for the messages and different things that are going on at the church. What an awesome, awesome group of people. What an awesome worship team. They're just uh, uh, relentless in the kingdom, right? They're a lot like who I'll be speaking about today. But I uh, just want to encourage y'all to open your hearts. The Lord laid a, a great word uh, on my heart to, to speak to us about. And uh, he wants to take us to the next level. You know, really, he wants to say, all right, you're right here. Let's move up here. And he's got so much to do for us and for us to do. For, for, for me to be able to do for him, I must let him do for me. Does that make sense? For me to change in wherever that's at, to to really be more effective. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but he wants us to be really effective. You know, he wants us to, man, he wants to just change our whole way of thinking, which is the way we hear things, filter things, which is our paradigm, and go, he just wants to take that to a whole different level. And go, all right, he wants us to be able to look back a year from now and us to go, wow. Not that we think this, hopefully, but man, I thought I had it going on then. And now I'm here. And now I'm going to be here next year, you know, or next month, whatever it may be. He continually wants us to grow. And he continually has some awesome plans for us. So what a great God. God, we just uh, once again invite you and thank you. Today I'm going to talk about Stephen. Uh, Stephen, and to me, it's like, he's like, what a witness. And uh, some of y'all can see, any of y'all got great reading here? Can you see this? <laughs> Probably not. Can you read it back there, little sis? You read it a while ago, that's why. <laughs> it says, in it to win it. Y'all hear that on the sp sports terms, right? Why are you doing this? Because we're in it to win it. Uh, they won't be denied. People that are playing this, playing that, won't be denied. They're in it to win it. I tell you what, Christians, Christians are in it to win it. We're in it because we want it. We want it. <laughs> We've already won it, and we're just going to com continue to add to that. So we're in it to win it. Uh, I believe I would speak for a lot of people when I say that, that you, we're in this because we want to serve him. We love him. We know the ending, and we've heard that before, but we're in it to win it. We're in it to win souls, right? There's nothing greater than looking at and knowing you touch somebody's life and go, man. You know, and, and you can do that in a non-arrogant way, right? They're coming to this church because they connected with and I invited them and they're, whatever the reason may be, it's like, man. And then you know where they came from and you know where they're at. It's like, man, that's what serving the Lord's all about. You know, using our testimony. They can say, I remember you win, but, but we continue to climb and go forward. God's got some awesome plans. Today, I hope to point out some of our opposition. Any of y'all ever felt opposition in your life? Everybody's double hands back here. Uh, many of us, right? Double hands there from my usual cheeseburger man. And I'm going I'm to really try to give us an example how to get through these times, uh, uh, make it successfully. I consider Stephen very successful. He died as a martyr, very successful in the kingdom, very successful. And I want you to think about these things. Uh, uh, on Acts 6 and 7, chapter 6 was pretty long and long enough and chapter 7 is very long uh, lots and lots of verses so I'll be quoting from there uh, tell you where some of the verses came from uh, I'll kind of give you a little snapshot of it uh, Stephen served the Lord wholeheartedly people started lying about him because they didn't like him why and I'll talk about it because he was bold for the Lord he was led from the Lord led to do these and he was bold and people hated his guts so there was opposition for him and then they made the lies up, and then he got to go talk before all these religious leaders. And, uh, and basically, when he was saying all this stuff, they knew that he was talking about them, how pathetic they were, how they didn't obey the law of Moses because it said this was coming and all this stuff. So they took him out and they stoned him, as was the custom, to, uh, 
to do <laughs> the people that told the truth like Jesus, you know, and they would kill you if they didn't like it, right? That's a great law, huh? So, uh, so they did that, but he was very successful. So Satan opposes the progress of the early church. Does he oppose the progress of our church? Does he want to start some of those things like in, Ch in Acts 6 and 7 in our church? He does. We can either participate or we can know that we want to be in unity and we serve a greater cause. And say, you know what? I'm not going to murmur. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to gossip. And hopefully we would go to whomever that we need to go to uh, to talk to about that. There's a, that says the little foxes spoil the vine, right? So these little things that, you know, the enemy wants to do. Uh, guard your hearts. Satan opposes through inward dissension. When you read that, they were talking about inward dissension of all this stuff going on. It's because they didn't understand each other's language and different things. So there, there's always reasons to have inward dissension. But there's always a greater reason to not have it, right? To not have that inward dissension. Uh, but as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. Moses dealt with this. Everybody deals with this. Uh, so as they grow, uh, as they grew, problems grew, and people started murmuring and all that type stuff. None of them were able to stand against the wisdom and the spirit of Stephen when he spoke. So when he addressed them, uh, they, they couldn't hang with him at all. So what did they do? They, they killed him. And they, they lied, of course. Uh, so they persuaded some men to lie about Stephen, saying, We heard uh, him blaspheme Moses and even God. So, of course, they lied. Satan opposes through outward persecution. Most of us, probably all of us in here, but uh, whether we're listening uh, online or wherever or in here, we never dealt with anything like they've dealt with. And I'm grateful for that. I pray that my, uh, for my family quite often of uh, them to not have to, to deal with certain things. Uh, some of y'all may have dealt with little stuff. I consider mine kind of small on the scale that I dealt with at the, at the county. Uh, people know that you serve Jesus. Opposition will come, right? Problems will come. And uh, it goes on anywhere that I go when I'm talking to people. You know, people are on board with what we're doing, but this guy's not. He opposes Jesus Christ. He's not really at odds with me, but he's at odds with the king. And I happen to be in that you know, role, or you happen to be in that role. So you know, odds with you, but he's really at odds with God. He or she is really at odds with God. So, uh, so that happens. So he can do that with the, uh, the dissension of the inward or outward persecution. People turn their back on you. The, the list could go on and on. Talk about you, gossip about you, all that good stuff. He, he or thee thinks you're so righteous. Y'all ever heard that before? You think you're so great? Well, yeah, I really do. You know, y'all ever answered like that? I really do. <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for saying that. Thank you for noticing. That helps out a lot, by the way. Thank you. Jesus believes that I'm pretty special, too. Thank you. So did my teachers when I was in school. I got to sit in a specific place right up by the teacher every single year. I like thought, I thought it was an award. They're like, David, you heard about me already? <laughs> You're going to be right up here, young man. I thought we were going in alphabetical order. The rest of them are. You're going to be right up here. <laughs> You're going to be sitting by me again this year. All right. <laughs> So I got to sit by him quite often. I know that's hard to picture, me being quiet and so loving and all that good stuff. But I got in a lot of trouble. And then they labeled me class clown and all this other stuff that some say, you know, may or may not be true. <laughs> but uh, well, it's good to stand out in the right way, right? <laughs> the Lord wasn't involved in me standing out then, by the way, <laughs> at all. Uh, Grandma took us and did her best. Uh, got us the word when she could. Amen. Loved on us. The church gets organized. Well, you know what? We're always striving to be more organized, just like the survey uh, that, that uh, the leadership uh, did, and we got passed out, you know, the elder board and all that, to, to be more organized. Some things we'll be able to look at and go, we want people's opinions. We want to be organized. We want to be the best at what we do, whatever it is. Whether it's any ministry in here at all, we want to be the very best at it. Does that make sense? And do it and be more, as prepared as we can be when we're preaching, when we're teaching, when we're doing whatever with the kiddos, the best that we can be. I want kids to grow up and go, man, this is awesome. I have a great time in there. There's nothing wrong with having fun, is there? Uh, there's nothing super religious about me. You need to sit down. You need to be quiet where I can teach you. And me. You know, I could use my law enforcement voice. And, uh, I got to be able to differentiate, right? And go, all right, I'm not out on patrol right now. I'm either teaching here and I've taught kids before. Or I'm talking to my kids at their level, right? And we want to be able to touch them on their level. I don't go into my instructor academy mode and go, hey, hey, hands behind your back. I mean, what'd you say, sweetie? I'm sorry. You can get up off the ground. My, my bad. Sorry I did that arm bar takedown. You'll be all right. You're 11. You'll, you're very, you're easy to bend when you're 10 and 11 like my girl, so you'll be all right. So we have to know who we're dealing with, who we're talking to, and all that stuff. So we want to be organized. We want to be on the right page with God and go, you know what? Uh, my way has not worked many times. 
many times. But his way always works. His way's not, it's not always easy for me when I'm following him, right? I've been ridiculed, made fun of. I've said that before. Some of y'all have been. Doesn't make you walk out and go, praise God, they made fun of me again today. What a good day. Another successful day in the kingdom. But you do say, Lord, just like out of Psalms 27, right? You've never left me nor forsaken me. You never said it would be easy. They didn't hang me upside down and do me as a martyr and kill me today. It wasn't so bad, I guess, that they laughed or whatever. So we want to be organized and as best we can. And that's even in a household too, right? And we don't want a religious structure, but we want to be organized. We want to have plans and do things. You still want to be spontaneous and all that stuff. But we want to be able to have fun in your, fa- in your house, right? We talk about that a lot. I like fun in my house. Do you all like fun in your house to have fun? Or do you want to tell us, what are you? I'm a deep personality. Don't you worry about it. I'm sorry, Daddy. All right. Whatever it may be, right? And you don't want to be all like, ha, ah, oh, this is very serious. Let's laugh about it. But there's a balance in there. The Holy Spirit talks about a balance, right? <laughs> you know, to where you're able to have fun and enjoy serving the Lord. I'll tell you what, when you turn it over to the Lord, there's nothing more fulfilling than serving the Lord and having fun in the kingdom, right? You can even laugh at people laughing at you. I've told you all this before. I'll share it real quick. I think the Lord wants me to share it again. When I was on the witness stand in, in one of the courtrooms, and I talked about how a prisoner talked to me, and he cussed at me and all these bad words and all this stuff, the, when I got up and they said, well, what exactly did he say to you? And, and I spelled it out. You know, some people went back there and they laughed. They're like, oh, you didn't want to say it? I said, no. And, and, and my, my word's not exactly this, but, but, but when somebody says something like that, I can say, well, mission accomplished. And they go, what does that mean? I said, my top priority is not making you happy. That'll bring him into the kingdom, right? <laughs> they are not my top priority. He is, right? So, we, uh, so you know, they, they made fun. They laughed. And, and I had really good peace with that. You know, and there's others that always, you know, that may come up and go, hey, good job. Hey, where were you when they were? Hey, where, where, all right. So that's all right, though. He says good job when we're faithful, right? And that's okay. I can spell them out. I have no desire to say those words. I'm not getting on you for some of y'all that probably say those words sometimes. He wants us to continually change, right? He's the one that does the conviction, the Holy Spirit. We know if, if we're not getting convicted, then we're, something's really out of whack. Does that make sense? Like, it doesn't bother me at all. Well, something, something's not right then. But if it's bothering you, the Holy Spirit's going, there's areas I want you to change in. And there are, there are areas like that. They did not want me to be like mom and dad, my mom and dad, that I loved and honored until they died. They did not want me to be an alcoholic. They did not want me to be an abuser. They did not want me to have a crazy temper and yell and ah, whatever, all that stuff. He had a different plan. He had a different plan for them too, by the way. But he had a different plan for me, right? He said, you don't have to be like that. You don't have to, you don't, the cops don't have to show up to your house all the time. They're like, hey, how are you doing? It's good to see you again this week. Everything's good now. They're hugging now. Everything's all right. <laughs> That's how, yeah, everything's good now until you drive off, sir. Don't leave me. So we want to be organized. We want to be organized. Kind of went off there a little bit, but I feel like the Lord wanted to, to share that. Uh, that's why other leaders are appointed. There were other leaders that were appointed in this situation. Stephen, when you read this and study this, he was the first spirit, spirit-filled man in this situation that was appointed. It says he was a spirit-filled man. Not only was he saved, but he was spirit-filled. So he believed, you know, all that, the gifts. Uh, So he was a spirit-filled man who was the first chosen. Proper organization brought growth and many blessings. So we don't have to be flawless and perfect. We strive for that. But proper organization, we want to have proper organization, brings growth and many blessings. Anybody want many blessings? I tell you what, it's talking to the household. Not only our households too, right? Household at church, proper organization for us to treat one another right and so forth. Uh, Let me, just, let me share this with y'all. If this word is for you, then, uh, then you grab it, you take it, then it's for you. Uh, close your eyes, if you would, for a minute. It's not mandated, but I'm asking if you would just to, to absorb this if it's for you. Uh, your first priority is your family, right? Your first priority is God. Let me back up. But your first priority in the ministry is your family, uh, it's not for me to, to run off and go save the whole entire world and leave my family fending for themselves. So the first priority is the, the kingdom of God, of course, serving God, and then your family, not to go do this. They are, they are, not, a, uh, they are not put on the back burner for you to go do other stuff. Does that make sense? Uh, especially if it's going on continually. You don't want them on the back burner. And I got another word. If it's for you, then, then you grab it also. Uh, if there is a, like, a, a vo- if it's volatile in your house at, at times, you know, that means you're, you're yelling, you're whatever and going on, that is not God's plan. 
He wants you to be delivered from that. He does not want you to be volatile. And whatever your situation is, he doesn't want you screaming at your wife or your wife screaming at you or your kids. They're all influenced. It's all generational, right? So you don't want that. If you've done that, if you've made mistakes, I'm not just talking about me, if I've made mistakes and you've made mistakes, then you rectify that, you repent, you move on. If it's lingered on for a while and you haven't dealt with somebody, I really feel this, then you want to say, Lord, I don't want to be prideful. I don't want to say I'm too good to go to anyone. They don't need to know any of my business. Come to someone. It can be me or pick somebody else uh, that you know is there to help you. And you can un unclose those eyes if you like. Thank you all. But really, I want you to just think about grabbing on like that. You don't have to have the anger and the opposition in your life. This is not part of the sermon. This is part of his sermon, I guess. But the anger and opposition, or whatever it is, to continually, nah. you know what I'm talking about? Hey, can we, nah. how about shut up? Nah. You know, it, no, nobody wants a household like that, right? It just, it just rips your spirit, your, your soul, it eats at you. Your mind, your will, your emotion, eventually it just wear you down. You can't survive like that. It's a miracle that people have survived like that for years and are still together. But Lord says, you know what? Make it a peaceful household. Amen. For it to be a peaceful household, that means I got to open up in your words, right, and say, Lord, come and consume me. Come, Lord. I am not healed. I tell you what, I, I could be hanging on. You could be hanging on to all that stuff from childhood. Lord, I can't do it. I need a pity party. Ugh, I need some more. I need people hugging on me, crying over me. Been there, been healed. Amen? Don't need it. I got a good memory. I can remember every bit of it. It's more faint. It's more distance now. Sometimes I think about it and I go, hmm, huh, that was so long ago. I don't think about it anymore like that. Uh, but if you're overwhelmed, like, oh, in any of those situations, God does not want you to be that way. He wants you to walk uprightly and free. And once we get that way, then you understand more of how it is to go out and win souls. Right now, in a current state like that, like I'm talking about, it's almost impossible. It's not impossible, but it's tough. Hey, go witness to somebody. Shut up. I'm over here. I'm dying over here. <laughs> You're crazy. I can't do I can't. I don't even want to leave my house, right? That means there's maybe depression linked in there, whatever, right? Different things like that. People come over, you don't want to talk or whatever it may be. God wants you to flourish in how he's created you. He hadn't created you to be like me. He's created you to be like you, the, the real you, right? And whatever that is, that's why we all have a functionality in the church because he's created us all differently to do different things. Sometimes it takes a while to get over some things. Uh, I'm aware of that. It takes your average person 30 years, right? Your average kid, average, 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 30 years to get over a divorce. That's a long time. When I heard that, I think it was a Dr. James Dobson study and all this other stuff I read years and years ago, I looked throughout my whole family, you know, to look and go, wow. They're still battling, he's still battling, she's still battling. All, it's, it's, it's almost without fail, every one of them went through divorce. There was hardly any kids that I talk to at school nowadays, you know, no matter what age, that, that aren't going through that. So God's still got a plan, right? These things happen. I grew up in that, and, you know, there's, there's just circumstances that happen. And God's plan is for us to move on and be effective and uh, serve him and go out and look for the lost, to get plugged in and go, man, I want more. I, I definitely want more than focusing on me. I look at me too long in the mirror in the morning, it's not good. I start going, blaming God and all this other stuff. All right, what happened to the hair, Lord? He's like, it's your fault. You're the one, whatever. You know, I don't, all, whatever it may be, right? I could, my focus could easily get off on me and wondering why I'm not a perfect 10 anymore. You're all thinking, is, is the scale a 100 now instead of, <laughs> no, it's still a 1 to 10, okay? <laughs> I admit, I'm down to a 9 or whatever. <laughs> Or eight, or two. That's an even number, probably. Uh, okay. What made St uh, Stephen uh, such a, a dynamic witness? That's what we're going to look at. Uh, and really, God really wanted me to emphasize there about peace in your household, peace and all that stuff. So here's the three things we're going to look at here. Uh, he had full confidence in the Word of God. He was fully committed to his Savior. He felt compassion for the lost. So uh, that's all in Acts uh, 7, 1 through 54 is really about the Word of God. I mean, that's, that's a lot of verses Committed to his Savior, that's in verses 54 through 56. And the compassion is 57 through 60, him talking about that. So confidence in the word of God. When Stephen began to witness, persecution began. When you begin to witness, it's okay. Persecution will come. God will lead us when we're supposed to witness, right? He wants to give us power, like I talked about last week, 
go out with the power, right? These guys had the power, so he wants us to, to be effective. Scriptures tell also just to, you know, like when they're talking about here, this was a, uh, a, to me, a heathen court that took him to court and stoned him to death. You know, there's other scripture in the New Testament that talks about settling your differences out of court. Y'all heard that before? Settle them out of court? That's because you're getting in front of unsaved people. They're going to make unsaved decisions, so try to take care of them out of court. Stephen relied on the word of God as he spoke before the council. His defense began and ended with the word of God, right? It began and ended with the word of God. So there was no question where Stephen stood at all. I'll tell you what, he, he, had, a, he had a tough day, didn't he? <laughs> a tough day and a good day, I'll talk about. It's one thing to quote verses in church, and it's another to stake your life on it. That sound pretty accurate? Woo, we could praise God. Hallelujah, let me do some charismatic circles real quick. Let me run around. But when we get out there, are we really staking our line? Do we really mean it? You know, are we really going for broke out there? And like I said, there's a healing for some that must take place to be effective, more effective, because his word is always effective. Uh, Stephen declared his faith in God's word, even though doing so for him, it meant death. He was fully committed to his Savior. The council reacted violently to him. He was bold, and they didn't like it. If we're bold, people are not always going to like it, right? I've been tur- I was turned in for that before, and it was all fabricated, all made up. You know, like, well, he did this, this, this. I kind of smiled. Had a, had a Christian, uh, Christian guy that was way over up in the chain of command that was back there, which was good. Uh, praise God. Uh, and it went my way, which later, means later it went bad because these other people were <laughs> still in my lives, right? You know, they were pretty, pretty rough, so that's okay. Uh, but, but God was always with me, as tough as it was. Uh, he was always there with me. So people will react violent to him. They demanded his death. So don't be surprised when rejection comes. Jesus said believers would reject us. Why? Because they rejected who? Him. That's in John 15. They rejected him, so they will reject us. Everybody's not going to reject us, right? There are some that are going to go, man, I need that. Thanks for sharing your testimony with me. That's some of, the, some of the best witnessing right there, sharing your testimony, where you came from. Here's where I used to be. And, and, then, and then we're different, and we're like, they're like, man, I, I like that. Uh, I want to be like that. If we are committed, and, and this is like talking about selfish, if we're committed to self, uh, then we will shrink back on things like that, on witnessing and different things like that. We, we really won't be able to do it. Um, that life will be faithful as long as it's convenient. Does that make sense? So that means, Lord... I, I want to be able to be faithful all the time. If you're called to sacrifice, if these people, if, if you're leading a selfish life and you're called to sacrifice, you're just going to run the other way. But if you're fully committed, it's a different story. It's a whole different story. It uh, may not be easy, but we can still, we will, we will be able to get through that. The life committed to the Savior is bold. Even in the face of danger, you know, you're, they're able to be bold. I was a, I'm a, I never think that I'm uh, Mr. Bold, that I did this or did that. Everybody has a story uh, of, of things that they're able to do. Uh, I've shared this before. I'm going to share it very short and quickly. But I remember uh, years ago, our, uh, one of the chaplains couldn't show up when I was at the, the training academy and I was instructor there, and the, he, couldn't, he couldn't make it to say the prayer. And they're all like, hey, will you say the prayer? I said, sure, I'll say the prayer. So a buddy of mine, he, he wanted to give me a printed out prayer, and he warned me about, you know, about Jesus saying Jesus' name. I said, well, I appreciate the warning, and uh, I, don't, I don't need the printout. Thank you. You know, we talked a little bit. I said, I'll be all right. I can wing it. <laughs> so when I go up to pray, uh, you know, I'm thinking like, well, this is my one and only prayer I'll ever do for you here probably, Lord. <laughs> but I'm going to make sure that they hear Jesus in there. You know, so uh, I prayed it. Uh, the, the, the big dog uh, led, a, led a whole different lifestyle, uh, lesbian, immediate supervisor, lesbian at the time. Got along with her, great, the immediate one. We loved one another for some reason, uh, which is good. That's a God thing, right? After the prayer, I did the prayer, and she goes, man, that was marvelous. That was awesome. That was so touching, Dave. Thank you. And then the big dog came over to talk to her later on. You tell him. <laughs> she didn't like it too much. I said, well, you tell her. They don't have to ask me anymore. They ask me all the time. <laughs> so I started doing it. I'd get eye contact, and he's like, <laughs> be ready, man. Uh, so it's not always easy. Uh, that went okay, to be honest with you. I knew there was always that friction. When light and darkness walk by one another, there's going to be a little bit of friction, right? It's just going to be a grind. felt like an SOS pad when I'd walk by. Ouch. 
I can take it. So we want to uh, be able to be bold. The Savior met Stephen in his time of need. He wants to meet you in your time of need. When you read that scripture, the heavens opened up right before they took him out, right? He says, I can see Jesus at the right hand of God. They opened up heaven to show him a glimpse of heaven, of what he was going to. That had to be very uh, calming. To know, All right, this is going to hurt physically. It is hurting. But they saw the heaven open up. So he wants you to know that the heavens are open for you, that the Lord and Savior is right there for us. To not just have that glimpse, but to have him all the time. To have him there when we're walking out in these trials, when we're going to talk to people. Know that the word says his word will not return void. What does that mean? I broke it down and studied it. It means his word will not return void. That's pretty easy, right? That means it will be effective. It will be for a purpose. It will be for a reason. You know what? I think there's been times that we've witnessed to people. They didn't receive it. They end up dying. I'm like, well, how does that not return void? I got good out of it. Not only was I obedient, but I believe he's going to bless and honor us, and it will not return void. They got to hear it. Every man and woman, it's in their heart at birth, word, the word says, that, that there's a God. Whatever they feel, whatever they think, uh, but it will not return void. What an awesome God, right? He felt compassion for the lost. Uh, I think it would be great to, to pray that and say, Lord, I need more compassion. I need to feel this. Help me to get to this point to where I can start walking out and being more effective and be effective. And uh, we're going to start just continuing to see, you know, we, uh, growth, more couples come, more families come, and stuff like that. You look forward to it, you're like, oh, they took my seat. Aw. <laughs> Lamar, everybody knows Lamar's on the fourth row right back there in the corner by his new bride. Did I tell you all they got married? That's right. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to curve off or anything, but I can see what he sees in her. But, no. <clears throat> so, Lamar says, all right, you want to grow the church? I'm going to propose, and now she's a member. How about that? Just doubled, doubled his family, kind of. Now, All right, good, good job. <laughs> so, pretty awesome, huh? He wants us to feel compassion for the lost. So when they come in, they take our seats and we have to go to two services or whatever the case may be, right? That's good. We need to move around anyway. <laughs> Does that throw you off when somebody's sitting in your seat? You're like, y'all don't have a seat, do you? Y'all are moving. That was good. Mover and a shaker. That's Mary. <laughs> so he had compassion. Heaven was real to Stephen. He looked up and saw Jesus. Like I said, he wants you to look up and maintain your focus. It's very easy to lose our focus. Real easy, right? I work all the time, right? That's what that awesome Sunday school is about. We're so busy, man. We're busy. Anybody busy? I got this going on, man. I'm too busy to do anything. I guarantee you, I'm right in your category. I'm never too busy for him. And uh, I, I hope that that's really the case. You know, I'm tired and I'm wore out sometimes. I've been sitting positioned by, I go somewhere sometimes, I go, well, let me go, let me go out and do this and stop here and go grab a bite alone and sit there. And then the, the Lord, having a great sense of humor, he'll put something there, I think, to go, okay, you need to go talk to that person. And I don't say, are you kidding? <laughs> but I'm probably thinking that. Oh, great, I came to rest. That'd be good. So we get the challenge of being obedient, right? Or like I said last week, then you can, he may give you a word to go give him. You may, he may just tell you to go walk up and say, you know what? I don't know what this means, but God wants me to share how much he loves you. He's aware of what you went through as a child. He was with you always. It breaks his heart that your heart was broke or whatever it may be, right? And then, you know, they may start bawling as it's happened sometimes and then you walk off and you're like, all right, I'm glad I did it. I've been in a position before and they're way over there. I said, Lord, how about if you get them real close to me that I know that I'm really hearing from you before we walk out? And then I'm walking out the door and I'm like, oh, darn it. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Funny boy. <laughs> Go ahead and do it now. <laughs> Right? That's what I think. I think he's like, all right, how close you want them? They're right there. You know, uh, I don't recommend always giving him a challenge or whatever, but they're way, you know what I mean? <laughs> they may be out sitting on your hood. God told me to sit on your hood that you needed to, you needed to man up. <laughs> well, he just knows I'm particular about my car. I got a word for you, though. <laughs> Get off the hood. <laughs> he may do that, right? Pray for that, right? <laughs> you don't want to cave, cave your hood in. <laughs> or anything, but pray for that. Heaven was real to Stephen. Keep our focus on the Lord. Jesus was standing to minister to his faithful servant as he wants to do to us today and every day. 
He wants to minister to you today. He wants that, uh, even though you don't even, uh, we don't always catch that when there's a prophetic word thrown out there, when there's something that's really important for the Lord to say, he wants this peace in your household. That's directly for some people. He's like, man, I want peace. There's nobody really that doesn't want peace unless they're just, you know, out there a little bit. You know, we all want peace. We all want to, uh, to enjoy. We want people to come and visit and go, wow. Have y'all come to a house like that before? And you're going, there's just something about this house. It feels so peaceful. <laughs> it's because you're not running around choking each other like you normally do at your house. <laughs> and the presence of the Lord is here. <laughs> right? We've invited him. That doesn't always come up, but you know that's your answer deep down, right? We've invited him. We've anointed it. That's Right, Scott? We've anointed every post at, at, out at their property. He said, you don't have to get to that one. That's hard to get to. I said, oh, I'm getting to it, Scott. Crawling through the brush, getting all cut up. Whoa! Taking the anointing on, getting it all over me. Before I, I got it, I made it. Anointing their post for God to protect, for God's presence to be there, to protect his kids always, right? He, he asked me to do that, so I gladly go do that, right? To pray over that house, to be there. So that means God's presence is there. So that means when people show up, they're like, something different about this household. And it's not just because this man is weird. We mean something really different that is good, that we feel his presence. So that's, a, that's just taking our, our life really to another level, right? Go, oh, man, I want you there, God. I want, I, I, and, you know, our house has been anointed. I'm like, man, I, Bishop Ron has prayed over it way back in the day. And uh, so when I feel something evil or something bad, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I may not do it quite that nice. No, no, no. You're not allowed here. <laughs> you must go. And then I torment them with Jesus' name because Scripture says they don't like that, right? Does that sound right? Stephen's prayer just before death, just before he died. Look at the similarity. Even one of the priests that was there to condemn him was one they believed that was there to condemn Jesus also to do the same thing. Business as usual for these heathen that are going to hell, right? So let it be business as usual for us. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he basically said, forgive them, you know, for what they're doing. He said it in a different way, but hey, they know not what they do. <laughs> But it was really amazing to be looking up and just thinking that he's saying that, really like, man, be with him. His heart was for them to still come to the Lord. That's pretty amazing to me. Uh, you know, one of, us, one of us might be thinking, if I can just dodge a couple rocks and I can choke that guy out real quick, I can take him with me, right? I can take a couple with me. Stephen wasn't thinking that. He's like, Lord, forgive him. And here's, a, here's a, the last one, Stephen's source of power. This is his source of power, Scripture, right? That's our source of power, Scripture, to look and read. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's one of the things, uh, I forget the studies, there's real low of the, of the people that read their Bible. You know, it's just, it's hard, hard to get to, right? You're like, man, I'm just, I'm busy. Well, that's, a good, that's another good book that you're reading though, right? Other, other books are good to read, right? Anybody ever read other books? And I'll tell you what, many of us have replaced the Bible with those other books sometimes, right? Uh, he wants us to have a balance. He doesn't want you to be reading about all the, the demons and the lovely angels. And we need to learn all that stuff. He wants you to be reading his word, though. But that was his. Stephen's source of power was scripture, surrender. They all start with an S. Scripture and surrender. And I won't start singing it. I surrender all. Dave could do it if he was up here. <clears throat> I surrender all. I surrender all. I'll tell you what, all, that's only three letters, but that's a tough one, isn't it? That would be real tough. And to say, uh, whatever your situation is, you go home and you go, man, honey, I hadn't been doing so good. I have a hard time on some of these things. I want to surrender all. Will you help me? Will you pray with me, pray for me? I'll tell you what, it'd make you want to cry, really, to think, man, I, I need help. Nothing wrong with that. That's, that's humbling ourselves. And then we try to follow through. I need help. I want to get delivered, right? Uh, as I talked about for those three weeks, it was a, uh, which gobs of scripture, probably 100 scriptures or more to validate the demonic hates us, the demons and all that type of stuff. They just don't like us, right? If they're going to kill, steal, and destroy us in their mind, uh, then they're going to come at us every way that they can. A lot of times they'll come through the, the head of the house. They'll come through the husband and uh, get him indifferent or, you know, all kinds of situations. So we want to be able to uh, surrender it all. And souls is the last one, S-O-U-L-S, souls. Scripture, surrender, and souls. That was Stephen's source of power. He did all the above. D, all the above. He did all three of those. So he was just after it all the time, relentless. And we do have a job to do, you know, for, a, for an employer normally, you know, and all that stuff that's going on, raising kids and lots of stuff going on. And I highly recommend to look at all the activity that you've got going on in your life and then have a meeting sometimes, even a family meeting, and look at what you need to adjust. We all have stuff we need to adjust. If it's, a, if it's really interfering with him, then we need to adjust, right? 
So, so we need a balance. We still want your kids plugged in to do fun things and all that. Uh, but, but there are times that, uh, that, it, that it takes us away from, from serving him. So there's nothing wrong with doing a spiritual checkup. That's what that talks about. Uh, uh, what part uh, does the power sources play in your witnessing? And that's really the spiritual checkup. Uh, can our witnessing be even more effective? I think most of us would say, yeah, I believe mine can. Uh, I believe it really can. Uh, if you know nothing about Jesus, you know, whatsoever about anything, let's just say, man, I don't know nothing. How much do you know? I don't know squat. I don't know anything. You could still bring somebody to the kingdom. Isn't that amazing? You could just share something. You're like, all right. All right, they're, they're coming. You know, they're coming to whatever get-together. You're coming to taking off the mask. They're going, hey, man, I got this lady that she keeps it real. She's good. You know, come on. And all the ladies that are like, they got it going on. They're fine. They're, whatever. You know, and they're, uh, I haven't been to one, but it sounds good, huh? <laughs> and I am going to come. I've been invited as the pastor to come check it out. I said, I'm going to let y'all go a few months, come in and eat some of those cookies and show up. Uh, I just told Sheila, tell me when, you're, when it's your, rotates to your turn to bring the, bring the cake, Whatever. <laughs> Bring the cake. Uh, but to do that, to uh, all these different ways or avenues that we can do it, to invite them, whether it's a family fun day, that's an easy thing. Hey, we're having this. We got a jumpy house for the kids. We got this going. Whatever it may be, we can be effective like that. And just think, if you know and you start learning like, oh, that's what that means. If we get more of that power in us, the Holy Spirit, and we start having a better understanding of what he wants us to do and of his word, we're more effective, right? I know of homosexual preachers, preachers that brought people into the kingdom. People found out that they were homosexual later. It didn't negate their total transformation. It changed where they were going because they didn't believe in that. I would feel the same if, if I found that the preacher was an adulterer. Okay? You're like, oh, it's okay. It's all right. I, I go back to whatever. It's not okay. If I found out that his lifestyle, he's a big fat liar, <laughs> the list could go on and on like scripture. It talks about many situations, right? Right? Gossip is this, that, all these different things. So if I found that out, I would have a problem with all that. Does that make sense? The, the world, the media, all that seem to focus in on one. God doesn't tell us to do that. He wants us to go after everybody. So if we find that out, whatever out, we can, still, we can still go out, we can still be effective, we're still transformed, and we can still reach the lost. He still wants us to reach the lost. So we know we can be more effective. I'll, I'll end with this. If you have more scripture in you, if you surrender all to him, if you're going after the souls, if you're focusing on him, 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 instead of, this is a husband word, right? Me, 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 me. <laughs> it can be a wife too, but you know what I mean. What do you want to do? Something for me. How about tonight? Get rid of the kids. Something for me. <laughs> I don't know. How about you cook? Something for me. It could go either way, right? Me, me, me. That's kind of a word nowadays, right? What's in it for me? Could be woman, guy, anybody, right? Uh, a lot of people, they get a little selfishness that comes in sometimes. We all want to be spoiled at times, and that's okay. We all want to be treated a certain way, and that's good. But uh, he wants us to, to be as effective as we can. He wants us to focus on him. When our focus goes to him, our focus goes off these problems. That doesn't mean my electric bill got paid miraculously. Well, Lord, I'm focusing on you now. No, nope, still reads the same. Still 281.35 this month, doggone it. <laughs> Daddy, what do you want me to do? Don't ever touch that light switch again. Use my phone. It's got a little thing on it where you can go like that. <laughs> All right, we got to take you to emergency. Will you quit tripping over everything? All right. Oh, you're tripping. You wouldn't be doing that. So he wants us to be more effective. He wants us to connect with him. Amen? So we want our, you want your focus if it needs changing. I believe every Christian's focus needs to, to be a greater degree to him, even more so. That's glory to glory, right? Even more so. And you can take that to your household. If you're the one that's focusing, hopefully the other one will take notice. Hopefully you're both focusing, right? That would be great. But if the other one's not, then hopefully they'll take notice. How does a wife win her husband to the Lord? What does Scripture say? Nag at him. Yell at him all the time. <laughs> you're so lazy. And stuff. Why are you just thinking of yourself all the time? It says not to nag. Win him over, right? By love. Kind things. Let him see something different. I'll tell you what, it's very difficult. I've met with many people over the years. It, it, it's an empty spot in here. No, I'm okay. I've heard that before. I go, you're not okay. It's not the design. It's not okay. It's hard. But God will do his part in fulfilling all that he can, and he will, con he will continue to woo that person, whether it's a husband, whether it's a wife, 
whatever it is, for the focus to be on him. So I want you to be encouraged to know that your focus can change, my focus can change. I want my focus. I pray that God gives me the opportunities, that they're the right opportunities to go for people that need to hear about the kingdom. I'm very excited when I have doors that open up and I'm like, oh, I get to go be with kids this week, yay. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. I get to go hang out uh, uh, with, the, with one of the members here that goes, to, that goes to college. I get to go and go with all the, the ones, uh, you know, all girls in a dorm, different dorms and all this type stuff to, to be able to talk to them. So that's pretty cool. I can't wait to do that. That's good. So God opens those doors for us. He wants to open doors for all of us. He wants your heart, I'm going to close with this for sure. He wants your heart to be fulfilled. There's only one way to be fulfilled, and that's to turn it over to him, to turn it all over to him. If there's still that area, uh, then all those other areas will probably eventually go back away from him too. You know, like, I just can't do that right now. I can't do it. And, and that's the way some people think. I've been doing it this way for three decades. And I always ask in a nice way, how's that working out for you? Not so good. Deal with the pain now, and then you don't have pain for the rest of your life. You don't deal with it now, then you carry the pain continually, right? I'd rather deal with the pain and get it over with. Just cut me one hard time and get it over with. Put a Band-Aid on me. I'll be all right. Not a Band-Aid. That's probably not a good answer. But you know what I mean. Let's pray. Amen? Amen. Well, Lord, we just thank you for being a marvelous God. We thank you that, that you are the God. We thank you that your interest is for us. I pray here a blessing over everybody, Father. I pray that you would be with them everywhere that they go. All the situations that popped into their mind that they're dealing with that are going on, I know that they're very valid and they need help. I pray that your help would come. I pray, Lord God, as they come down for ministry time today, uh, that you would touch their hearts, that you would heal them. Lord, Scripture is oh so clear. Heal them all. That means we will pray for them to all be healed, Lord. Thank you that James is very clear on that too, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit is the healer and we can pray for people in any level, physical, emotional, or anything. We love you, Lord. I pray that we would honor you. I pray that we would not beat ourselves up, that we would not revert back to the past. When we get delivered, we move on. Lord, help us to be aggressive in our walk with you and aggressive for the loss. Help us to be like that little kiddo back there that we hear just being excited for you, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad that you love children so much, and I'm glad that your heart's always been to bless us. I pray that we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you.